I don't Speaking remember. of cholesterol, as I'm stepping through this whole keto world, I met Dave Feldman. Yeah. Um, who I know him. I know him really well. I mean, his stuff. Talks about yeah. cholesterol a lot. Yeah. Um, but you seem to have a problem with him. I when I first met him, I thought it was really exciting because I'm like, oh, this guy seems like he knows everything about cholesterol. He's got it down. What does he not have down that maybe is is wrong? Or why don't, why don't you agree with him? Because he sounds like. It sounds like it makes sense to me. Yeah, I think there's some validity to the, to the idea that high HDL, low triglycerides is protective for cardiovascular. And in fact, we've known that for a really long time before Dave came around. Um, and then there's some idea that if you have those and you have high, high LDL, then maybe it's not as harmful. Sure. But um, he goes the other step of suggesting that LDL is actually beneficial. Like it's gonna improve your longevity. There's no evidence for that. When you look at the randomized control trial literature, you assign people to reduce their LDL. It's always is either neutral because you don't have enough statistical power, or it's beneficial and improves their mortality. It's never reducing their. It's never making them worse. So he looks at epidemiological evidence and says that the problem with epidemiological evidence is that people with low cholesterol are often sick. It's not. It's the same as the vitamin D story. People with low vitamin D are often sick. So you posted about that the other day. I, yes, well, I think right? so. Yep. Now you said so you can't. That's why epidemiology is a problem. Yeah, the people with low cholesterol die. Yes. Um, earlier. They die yeah. earlier. Yeah, right? for sure. And you say because they're sick. Yes. So cancer, then, for example. Yeah. Okay. So like lower, cancer will yeah. like lower it yeah. way down. Yep. Do most people not have low cholesterol like that if they're healthy? Is that the is that the thing? Like so. You have to be actually really sick to get your cholesterol that low, or I mean, so then what does it say about like, um, like vegans and people that have it that low? Or those aren't the people that are dying. No, but 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 okay. So there's there's a group of people with low cholesterol because they're healthy, and then there's a group of low cholesterol because they're sick. And there's so many people that compared to people with normal cholesterol, since there actually probably aren't a whole lot of people with low cholesterol who are healthy because they're healthy. I think that's probably in common to have like low, be like healthy with low yeah. cholesterol. I, I, I don't even know anybody like that. <laughs> I don't even have that low of a cholesterol and I'm like healthy. Yeah. Um, because, because that's so uncommon uh, and because probably because sick, sicker people with low cholesterol is probably pretty common or because people with low cholesterol who are sick like die a lot. Yeah. And it's like, an, it's a powerful effect. That's probably why that would be the explanation. Why I would have to look at the data and actually make sure that this is the case, uh, and we'd have to. And this has been looked at for like decades, ever since like the 1980s. Like the p famous people who did the trans fat, should trans fat was bad. Yeah. We were looking at this like really hardcore, like really good scientists have been looking at this a long time ago, um, and then controlling for all sorts of different factors to try to pull out. And the, the consensus is overwhelming consensus is this is what what explains the epidemiology. And when you look at the randomized controlled trials, you don't even need to, in fact, entirely explain the epidemiology in the sense that we know that actively lowering cholesterol causes people to live longer. Yeah. Whether or not, um, whether, whatever the cause of the low cholesterol in the epidemiological literature causing people to die. If you, but uh, granted, if you do have really low cholesterol for like no reason and you're like thin and you don't feel well, you should think about things. Yeah, you know, yeah. I've actually uh, quoted this one study over and over, which I'll stop doing now, by the way, after I'm talking to you. But basically like um, there is one study that says like 75% of the people involved in this study had cholesterol under 200 you know, and they died, and then the people with the higher cholesterol, those are the ones that lived, right? It was like, so then I, that just made me think, like, well, if you have high cholesterol, why worry about it? But it's not as easy as an open and shut, like, one study thing, because those people were sick. There's and another There's another really interesting phenomenon. So if you look at laboratory animals, and you look at their weights over the course of their lives, yeah. they go like this, like down, right? It's like a, it's like a, yeah. it's like a, it's like a hump. You look at blood glucose, you look at cholesterol, you look at all sorts of different thyroid hormone, it's all like this, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like people who are near the end of their life, they start to- it Starts to dip. For all sorts of metabolites. You actually find that same association with, with blood glucose as well. People with really low blood glucose among people who are old, yeah. those are the people who die earlier. So epidemiological studies here are not helpful at all uh, in, in, in.